Hello and welcome to another episode of Punto How To. In this episode I'm going to be doing something different. I'm not going to be fixing something, I'm going to be installing something completely new on my 2011 Fiat Punto Evo. This car when new was fitted with lots of extras. This is one of the top end models so it has a number of features including cruise control, climate control, the Blue and Me 2 system as well as a whole host of other things including this rather stunning looking leather interior. The only problem with having a car with a leather interior, if you don't already know, is in the winter it gets very cold. And Fiat, although they fitted all these lovely extra options, they didn't fit heated seats. And that makes this car very uncomfortable to drive, at least for the beginning of any journey here in the UK, where the weather frequently drips to the quite cold end of the spectrum. In fact, today, it's currently only 9 degrees Celsius, and while it's not too cold to sit on these seats at the moment, if it was to get any colder, it's almost like being in a refrigerator. So we needed to do something about this. Now heated seats are very cheap and easy to get hold of, and I got hold of this set here off eBay for about £20. This set includes all you need to install heated seats in the car, so it's got the pads, the wiring loom, and the switches. And what I've done is I've tried to keep the switches, you can buy lots of different sets with lots of different switches, but I've tried to keep the switches in this set as close to the original ones that Fiat would have fitted in this car had it been a car for a different market. When the heated seats are fitted in the factory from new, the switches go here, between the front seats and behind the handbrake. The first thing I need to do with this set, however, because it was so cheap, is to make sure it works. And the only way to do that is to take it all out of the wrapping and I'm going to lay it out on the floor and actually connect the set directly to the battery and test it to see if we've actually got any power. The instructions for this set are quite poor, but essentially there are four wires, one earth, one main power wire that goes to the battery, and then two smaller wires that control lights to the actual control uh, switch itself. Uh, I make these connections on the battery. With all the connections made, we can look at the control uh, switch itself. This is not like the original set that um, Fiat would install, which just has an on and off button for each seat. This has uh, about five different settings and intermediate settings between those. So we just scroll the switch up and down just to check that they uh, all work and that switch functions properly. And then we turn our attention to the heating pads and make sure that they're getting hot. Now we're happy that everything works, we turn our attention to the inside of the car. We're going to have to take out the driver's seat and the passenger seat. We're going to have to take out a lot of the centre console and we're going to have to try and work out how we're going to wire these seats into the interior wiring loom. First of all though, we're going to remove the seats and to do this we need this torque bit uh, driver attached to my normal socket set. This I believe is a T35 socket. You will also need to detach the wiring for each seat, so at the front of each seat is this little plastic cover and with a small sharp screwdriver just ping these little pegs out. These secure the cover over the wiring plugs. They just pull out once you've popped them and the cover simply pulls off. Once you've removed the cover you can gain access to the wiring plugs. The connections are easy enough to separate. The one on the right here you just pinch and then pull the plug out. This is for the um, sensor for the seat. The one on the right has the wiring connections for the airbags and for the seatbelt sensor and you just pull this little yellow tab, pull the grey tab sideways and everything disconnects together. You can then undo the bolts for the seats. There are four in total for each seat, one on each side at the front and one on each side at the back. Once all the bolts are removed, we can lift each seat out of the car. So here's the seat out of the car, and here are the heating pads. Now we're going to put one seat in the bottom and one seat on the back. And we need to first work out how we're going to do this. So we just lay the pads out on top of the cushions of the seat to begin with. As you can see here, there's a bit of excess at the back, which we will trim off with a pair of scissors once we put the pad in. And then again, the back of the seat pad, if I just line this up, you 
you can see it stands a bit tall um, so we're going to have to trim the top part of the uh, the heated seat pad off but they would and should go in quite nicely on these particular seats you'll notice that there's a line of stitching down the middle of the seat and this doesn't actually attach to anything underneath this is just in the fabric the leather that makes up the uh, covering of the seat so it shouldn't cause us any problems when we put the heating pads in so there are some torque bit screws that hold the plastic trims around the sides of the seat so we'll start off by removing those um, we need to get rid of the plastic trims off the side of the seat as this will allow us access to the sides of the um, leather seat cushion next what I do is I take a pair of pliers and I very firmly get a good grip on the piece of plastic that holds this piece of fabric and I unhook it from all of these um, hooks on the back of the seat base um, this requires quite a bit of force because the seat cushion is held on very tightly so that it keeps its shape. Once we have unhooked all four of them and taken probably a couple of inches of skin off the back of our knuckles, um, we can then start to tuck the seat out of the way. As you can see, I can now push the fabric or the cushion away from the, the metal base. Being careful not to damage any wires, um, I just gently pull the um, foam away from the metalwork, as you can see here and then it's hinging on the front of the seat base so what we need to do now is unhook it there's some plastic clips along the front of the uh, underside of the seat which i'll try and show here um, as you pull the the cushion forward it lets you get these a little bit looser so that you can start to unhook them from the front of the seat base we've now removed the foam cushion as you can see here um, and we can now carefully pull the leather off the actual foam backing now as you can see this doesn't really help to pull it off from the back because there's stitching holding the leather onto the foam so we're going to go and remove it from the front of the seat um, peeling it off the sides first it will be quite tight and that's to keep everything nice and smooth and then if we just peel it off the front of the cushion you can see the stitching there it's not going through to anything under the seat and what we have is a little pocket inside the cushion seat here and that's where we're going to be placing our heater pad and then there is the wiring as you can see um, for the uh, pressure sensor for the seat so this is how the car knows if somebody sat in the passenger seat there's a hole through the foam and we're going to use that to um, to play wire for the actual heater pad through the seat we're going to grab our heater pad um, this has got tape down the sides of it so it sticks it to the cushion or to the leather so it doesn't move around once you've placed it in the seat and we're going to feed it into the cavity um, wire first so we can feed that wire through the hole in the cushion and we're just going to line this up we're going to get it inside the seat and get everything um, laid out so we can see how much of the heater pad we're going to need to trim off so we just get the wire through the cushion first then once we've got the wire in place we can carefully push the um, and help with the wire pull the uh, heating element into the seat um, and get it in as far as we can now the thing with heated seats is you don't heat the entire cushion sides and back and everything you just heat the middle bit that you're actually making contact with when you're sat in the car and as you can see there's quite a bit here that needs to just be trimmed off the front because there's not a lot of point in heating the front part of the seat and once I'm happy with the placement of the heater pad, I'm going to take a big pair of scissors and I'm going to carefully cut off the front part of the heating element in a straight line um, so that we keep everything nice and tidy. And then once we've cut that off, we've got a special silver tape which came as part of the heating uh, seat set. And we're going to peel that off the backing and then that goes around the edge of the uh, the cut off end of the heater pad this just helps insulate it from anything that might snag the the metal element inside the pad we can now fold the uh, leather back over the um, foam cushion and turn our attention to the back of the seat then we turn our attention to the back of the seat there are two zips buried in the back of the seat and we use something sharp like a little hook or a tip of a small screwdriver to hook the zip ends out of the uh, back of the seat 
and this can be a bit fiddly as you can see here and then once we've done that we can open up the zips and we can separate the clips that clip the back leather of the seat to the front leather of the seat this clips underneath the bottom of the back part of the seat we open that up and then we can push the leather through along with the foam turning the seat over now we can get to the front and we can open up that cavity in the back of the uh, seat back and we're going to test fit our heating element in that cavity first just to work out um, how long the element needs to be as we will need to trim some of it off again um, so we just feed the element up into the seat and get an, an idea of how much we're going to have to cut off we're going to need to trim a couple of inches off the top end of the pad so we measure that just roughly with my hand and then translate that to the top and then I'm just going to get a pair of scissors and trim the top part of the heating pad off again I'm going to seal the end with a piece of the special foil tape that was included as part of the set and then I'm going to feed the heating pad back up into that cavity in the back of the seat as far as it'll go making sure that it's nice and smooth and flat so there's no creases in the heating pad um, it's not going to get trapped or snagged on anything and it's all going to be um, nice and comfortable to sit on especially for a long journey we then clip the um, back of the seat back together we put the zips back in and bury those zips back in the back of the seat and once we've done that we turn the seat back over because we're now going to put the base cushion back in place this is a bit more fiddly so we need to hook the front part of the um, seat base into the front part of the uh, the metalwork the frame there's a long plastic clip that runs along the front of the leather and that clips onto a metal lip on the seat base we pull the uh, back of the cushion through the back of the seat and then we refit the plastic clips along the side of the seat cushion that all help tension the leather on the top of the cushion and then using a pair of pliers we retension the leather on the back of the seat as well so pull everything nice and tight so that nothing's wrinkled and everything sits smooth we then take a few minutes just to refit the plastic trims back on the sides of the seat and get everything looking nice and tidy we do exactly the same to both seats so driver and passenger side and then once we have finished fitting the heating elements in the seat we turn our attention to the car itself now we need to remove the center console we start by removing the uh, panel that controls the uh, lumbar support for the driver's seat that just pings out with a little narrow screwdriver down the top we disconnect the plug from the um, from the switch once we've removed that, we um, turn our attention to some of the other parts of the interior. So we remove the gaiter around the gear stick and lift it up out of the way. There are some trim panels in the footwell that simply pull out of the way, so we remove those. And then we turn our attention back to the underside of the armrest, where there are three bolts that we unbolt so that we can um, remove the top part of the armrest itself. We used a long reach socket set to be able to get into these. Once all three bolts are removed, we can carefully lift the armrest out of the way, being careful of that electrical plug that runs through it. So we just unthread that, um, put the armrest to the side, and then we work on the next part of the centre console. The next part is fairly easy to remove, it just requires a little bit of force. All you need to do is get a good hold of it and pull it up at the back and then lift it off over the front of the handbrake. There are now some more 10mm bolts or nuts in the bottom of the centre console that need to come out. And then right underneath the dashboard at the front of the centre console there is a bolt on each side which will need to be removed. And once you've removed all of those the centre console can be removed. So just carefully lift it up at the back lift it up over the handbrake and then just feed the gator for the gear stick through the middle of it. There is also some wiring connectors for the uh, cigarette lighter socket that you will need to detach 
So to do that, carefully reach underneath the centre console and detach these wires. Once you've done that, you can lift the console off and completely out of the way. If your car has the Blue and Me socket in the centre console, you will also need to remove this as well. I recommend popping it out the front, unplugging it and then feeding the wire back through the centre console. Et voila, we have a very empty looking car. This is a great opportunity to unleash the hoover on the car and get rid of all the crumbs and dirt and debris that is now exposed, which would normally be trapped in places you can't get to. Now we start laying out the wiring loom for each seat. We have two plugs goes to each seat. Parts of this wiring harness are quite short, so we thread them down under the carpet just beside the handbrake on either side of the centre console. We carefully lay out the wiring loom and there's a piece of conduit with quite a bit of space in it just on the left hand side of the gear stick. So we thread our main power and earth wires down this towards the front of the car. And it's a bit fiddly but we um, get the relay in a safe position where it's not going to foul on anything else, any of the mechanisms for the handbrake or the gear stick. We um, then thread the wiring up which is going to go up towards the actual switch itself. Um, and then we have to find some um, power le leads in the actual socket which feed the um, lumbar support motor. Um, so we're going to do a bit of testing on this plug here. This set didn't come with any sort of fuse, so we bought a simple fuse holder, um, rated well over and above what is necessary for the heated seat set. And all we did, um, it came with a length of wire, so we just took the opportunity to solder um, the length of wire from the fuse holder to the end of the wire for the uh, heated seat main power feed. This um, is very simple, we just add a drop of solder to each end of the wire and we've already threaded some heat shrink onto the wire itself so that when we have uh, joined the two wires together we can then simply heat the heat shrink and this will uh, make a joint which is nice and strong and also is fully insulated so we won't get any short circuits. We then attach the other end of the fuse holder to a large switched ignition live underneath the dashboard that we metered out and we solder that in place as well so that we've got a nice strong connection that's not going to break apart. We insulate that and tuck it out of the way and we make some test connections just so that we can plug in the switch and make sure it's lighting up and um, actually switching on the heated seat elements. Another thing I have to do is I have to fit this switch into this panel here, which is going to be a bit difficult. Um, this panel sits like this in the car. The switch is going to have to go in the middle here, but it is ever so slightly, just trying to show you, longer than where the curve is. So we're going to have to very carefully trim it into this edge here for the actual curve so that it doesn't um, look too odd. Very carefully, using a rotary tool, I cut out the size of the switch, um, starting with it smaller than the switch so that I can then enlarge the hole later, just to make sure I don't cause serious damage to this panel because it would be difficult to replace. I test fit the switch a few times to the panel to get the alignment as best I can. Um, this seems to be about as best as I'm going to get it for now. There is still a little bit of a curve in the bottom of the panel, but I may try and address that with a little bit of heat or maybe 3D print something in the future to help fill that gap. I reassemble the centre console and the armrest assembly as well. And then the last thing to do is to connect the yellow and red wire from the um, heated seat kit to the electrics in the car which control things like the uh, lighting for the dashboard. Um, I'm not too worried about the light on the switch being on permanently so I just connect it to the live that goes to the uh, lumbar switch, the uh, switch that controls the little motor for the lumbar support in the driver's seat. Solder them together, put a little bit of insulation tape around the joints and then we have a completely connected uh, heated seat set. We put the armrest back in the center and we start putting the 10mm bolts back in that secure it in place. This helps sandwich all the various bits of the centre console back down. It's then a case of fighting the little panel back into position, fighting all the wiring back into the middle of the armrest. 
getting everything tucked in neatly clipping everything down like so and you'll notice as I'm doing this that the switch for the heated seats is upside down this is so that it reads correctly to the passenger and the driver so the right is on the right and the left is on the left obviously we're not fully complete yet we have to put the seats back in the car so that's just a simple case of lifting them in and making sure that everything is lined up properly before we bolt them down we bolt the seats in at the back and you can see here the wiring for the heated seats is just lying in the footwell ready to be plugged in. We get all the bolts done up at the front as well. We then reconnect the electrical connectors for the seat, for the airbags, for the sensors and for the seat belt warning. It's just a case of clipping them in as we had unclipped them earlier. We put the cover back over the electrical connections like this and put the pegs back in to lock it in place. The final job to do is go to the back of the seat and we find the connections that we added to the seat earlier and we connect up the electrical supply from the controls to the seats themselves, just clipping them in here. And once we've done that, we tuck the wires up under the seat out of the way and if needs be, put a little tie wrap in just to secure them so that they don't pull or get trapped. Finally, we add a 10 amp fuse to our fuse holder that we installed earlier. And that's it, that's every job tackled. We now have a fully fitted, fully working heated seat system. As you can see, the control is down here between the seats, so it's easy to get to. And what you do is you just scroll the wheels on either side up and down to set the temperature you want. These are incredibly good seats. They get very hot, um, and I don't think I can really cope with anything above three, even though it goes up to five. Um, but that works brilliantly. And this just shows the switch up close. It does light up blue, um, which I'm not going to bother changing. And the scroll wheels light up red to tell you when they're switched on. If you turn them to their off position, the red light switches off so that you know that there's no heat on the seat. And that's it for this video. It's a bit of a long video, but thank you for watching. If you haven't already done so, please consider clicking subscribe on the link below. Give us a thumbs up and leave some comments if you've got anything to say about this video. We will see you again. Um, do check out our other videos on the channel, um, but this is bye-bye for now.